I never thought that it would be so simple, but I found a way. I, I found a way. And I always thought that it'd be too crazy, but guess what? I, I found a way. I found a way. And if you open up your mind and just see what is inside, please tell me what is inside. Jersh and Draken, Johnny and Django, Drew Do and New New, and Drew Dre J J. Jane and Dram was an incredible show. Honestly, one of my favorites. All throughout my childhood, I would sit on my couch and chuckle. I'd chuckle hard at Fat Man and Pretty Boy doing antics. They do many the antics. They have a little sister, her name is Meh, and would like physically assault them. It was very funny. Now, Johnny Test ran from 2004 to 2007, all 24 7 days a week. And and any day that you'd turn on the TV, you'd see Drake or a Josh just dying. Josh would break his foot, Drake would get the Black Plague, and the dad would get physically assaulted as well. Now, you must be saying to yourself, dude, wow, this show was so much darker than I remember. And I know, dude, it's, it's, it's crazy. Dungaree and Jam was the darkest show ever. But dude, the movie was even darker. Now, of course, we're talking about Drake and Josh Go Hollywood. Drake and Josh Go Hollywood is a 2006 wedding invite starring Drake Bell and Josh Peck 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 and Miranda Cosgrove. The movie involves Josh being a brother and helping Drake in his music business. He does this by helping him launder money. <laughs> Nickelodeon movies am I right? This movie is weird. It's almost impossible to find anywhere on the internet. The only place you can find it is basically the back alley of the old Nickelodeon lot at Universal. I went and headed into the little bathrooms that they have back there where they have a little Nickelodeon splat on the floor and guess what? There was a little cop copy of Drake and Josh Go Hollywood in the toilet. I'm really lucky to have found that. The normal show is just this dumb, fun show with the most iconic moments. So many lines of dialogues or just storylines were insanely influential to the comedy of my childhood. But this movie is different. It's weirdly more adult with business ventures and crime and kidnapping. It's insane the adult themes that are in this movie. So the movie begins with a gorgeous landscape shot of California. It's the money shot. We then see the classic Drake and Josh house, the gorgeous house that totally still exists in the real world. We see our classic family, Mag, Jan, Druk, dad, and mom. For some reason, June has an earring, but he's like, never had an earring in the show whatsoever. The movie also doesn't even mention it, and later in the show, he doesn't have an earring, so, so, so like, what's going on? <laughs> Why does he have an earring? Where, where does it go later on? I, I want to know about this earring. It's a fashion choice, man. I mean, hey, if, if Jupe wants to wear an earring, go him but it's random. It's weirdly random. Drake and Earring, that's the whole show. That's my favorite show. John goes upstairs to, to Drake and Drake just straight up has an amp from the year 3000. Bruh, this man got a Tesla coil in his bedroom. This thing shoots mad lasers like crazy. Drain gets a call from his manager and is like, yo, 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 manage me, dude. So the manager gets him managed at an elderly home. At the home, this man plays a banger song. There's actually a lot of classic Drake Bell songs throughout this movie, but it makes me sad that the album that that all of this is featured out on, it also isn't really easily available. I love all the cheesy songs from the early 2000s. You wanna know what this song sounds like? Yeah, 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 isn't it great? I love it so much. So this man plays his Tesla coil at the old home and lasers go crazy and sets the entire home on fire. And because of that, Danny and Jack have to leave town. Luckily, Megan is already leaving town. During this, June is like, yo, Drake, your manager sucks. Let me let me hook you up, you king. And so Joss pushes to manage him. So Jun and Ja put Megan on the wrong flight. They send her to LA. So of course, these boys have to go and collect her. They attempt to just board a plane straight up and of course, they get arrested. But luckily, they're easily let go from custody. Oh, we learned, especially during the strip search. And then they get to the next light to LA. That that was that was easy. That that was that was no problem whatsoever. It's only just a plane, only just a very serious like safety concern. Joe sits next to some hefty people on the plane, and he hates that. So he moves to sit next to a creepy man who's up to no good. This man is like doing some crazy stuff on an iPad Nano. The boys land in LA while Megan is taken to some crazy dope hotel. We then see the creepy guy meet up with some really big buff guy. 
they meet up near a bathroom to trade iPod Nanos. It's like when I went to the bathroom at Universal. Remember when I said that? Remember when I was talking about the bathroom at Universal? <laughs> Uh, it also turns out that the creepy guy accidentally took Josh's iPod Nano, and Josh has the hacked one. These boys go to a hotel, and Josh slides a laptop under a bathroom stall, and luckily, the guy that was taking a poopy in there is a manager that, you know, gets interested in Dram's band. He gets him a gig, and Josh screams. <laughs> The bad dude somehow finds the exact room that they're staying at at the hotel, and they attempt to fight them for the iPod Nano. They steal a car, and Danny does some sick car moves and loses the bad guys, but the Popo pulls them right over, but it turns out, oh no, they're not Popo, and Joss and Josh are kidnapped. They're taken to a warehouse where they're literally locked away in a grimy, dirty, disgusting room. Like I said, this movie is dark, dude. It's dark because there's no lights, <laughs> I always get those comments on these videos. Oh, it's been so dark, it's just turn your brightness up, dude. Uh, sh shut up. Sh shut up, dude. This movie just has underground crime syndicates in LA and kidnapping. Nickelodeon ain't playing around, man. I mean, the main big guy looks like Ray Liotta, a man with one of the creepiest faces to ever exist. Look at that. That's that's mad creepy. So it turns out that these dudes are using the iPad Nano as like a key on a money printer. They're printing those fat stacks like millions, dude. Why would they go through all that work when you could like just use a normal printer to print money? I mean, it's totally possible. So these boys attempt to break out and they just like hit these guys with stuff and it doesn't really work then the boys are tied up and thrown very conveniently next to a knife yep when when you kidnap people you just leave knives laying around on the ground yep of course. Also, conveniently, Megan finds the boys and calls LA police. So many conveniences in this movie, I swear this movie is just Drake and Joss go convenience store. It's like Dr. and Drew have heat seeking detection or something, or they just have trackers located in their very poofy hairs. Megan always somehow finds them, or they somehow always find Megan. Everyone just finds each other so easily. California isn't a small state, dude. I went there once. I, okay, I went, I pooped in uh, Call Me Carson's house, okay? It's, it's, it's a very, it's a very, like, big state. State. You can't just find people easily like this. This movie is unrealistic and for that reason it gets a 0 out of 10. Megan sneaks inside and turns on a fan that causes all the money to fly everywhere and annoy everyone. Dak and Jack break free and run while the money is flying everywhere. This part as a kid was actually my favorite because just imagine being in a room with cash just flying everywhere. It's kind of insane. I would dream about this. I would dream about just having this money hit me in the face and give me paper cuts all over. Oh, it would be so nice, man. For some reason, everyone dog piles Drake and Megan steals a bunch of stolen money. Wow, committing a crime on a crime, Megan? SMH. Big SMH. The police then run in weapons high in the sky and arrest all the hooligans. Apparently the car they stole earlier was Tony Hawk's car. What? Wow, what a funny little tidbit. Just a nice little cute joke for the audience. This this was Tony Hawk's car. That's cute. So instantly, after all of this traumatic kidnapping, Drake goes to perform live in concert from the gig that Josh got him earlier in the toilet, and Drake does really great. They get random girls and drive Tony Hawk's car some more. <laughs> that's a funny tidbit. And that's the Drake and Josh movie. Not that one. This movie is strange. I love it because it has a lot of nostalgia, but it's definitely just, just not good. This movie just kind of drags on for a long time once the boys get kidnapped that's that's like the rest of the movie like you also rarely see the boys for a while because they're stuck in one place and they can't really do anything interesting with that i like the movie just because it just feels disconnected from the entire show it's weirdly special because of that the entire original show is incredible and iconic but this movie is nearly impossible to find footage of if you're able to watch this it's almost like you're in a cool club full of like a few people and even though this isn't really one of like the best movies i'd like to more easily watch Watch it. It sucks that so many of the old Nickelodeon shows are hard to watch or just find good quality footage of. Imagine if shows like Drake and Josh or Zoe 101 got the Disney Plus treatment and was just available to stream for like everyone. That would be so dope. But like I said, this movie is just very different than the show. Josh has a very tiny arc in the movie, which is him like contemplating about exciting things that have happened to him, which makes you question, is this even the same Josh from the show? Because they're doing insane stuff all the time well before this movie. And then after the movie, it's just never acknowledged again. And Josh doesn't even have the earring anymore part after this movie. Maybe this movie just doesn't even exist. Maybe this Josh doesn't even exist. Maybe the movie just isn't canon. Maybe it's in limbo and just, you know, stuck there. If you throw a copy of Go Hollywood into the river at 3 a.m., will it cause the apocalypse? I have no idea. Also, what happened to the parents in the movie? You see them in the intro and then literally never again. Did they escape limbo? If so, good for them. They deserve it. Drun and Dram and Jack and Jill is a great show and with an alright movie. 
movie. Juniper and Cinnamon were my favorite duo growing up, and seeing them in their old wacky movies is just a good feeling. Even if they're not really the best movies, they just feel special because of that. It's weird that bad movies feel good. That's, that's a weird feeling. It's almost like if you open up your mind and you just see what's inside, then you can take some time to realign. Realign this movie and put it back into the canon. Just give me Drake and Josh all Logan style, where Josh has to bring Drake across the country for a cure of his black plague and have Josh die by the end. Oh, that would, that would be so good.